I now invite His Excellency Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Harvey Hall, Speaker of the House of Commons, United Kingdom. Sir, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I first of all start by expressing our thanks to you, to India, for the way that you've ensured that this conference has gone ahead. I've got to say we're in an amazing conference centre, so it's a big thank you for hosting the P20. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention the support for the State of Israel to defend itself and its people against the appalling acts of terrorism that Hamas has carried out in the last week. But Israel should take precaution to protect innocent civilians in Gaza in fighting terrorism. I recognize the legitimate aspirations of the Palestine people to support equal measures of justice and freedom for Israelis and Palestinians alike. But Hamas does not represent those aspirations. And we must never lose sight of achieving peace and the two-state solution. It has got to be our end goal. But of course, I also want to talk about the power of digital transformation. The relationship between government and its people is immense. Done right, it can mean better, faster, and more responsive public services with far greater reach than traditionally delivery methods. Done wrong, it can lead to a one-size-fits-no-one's approach. Citizens can become frustrated with so-called digital solutions, which do not solve their needs. Technical failures can lead to data loss or worse data leaks. I want to tell you about the e-petition systems in the House of Commons, a shared project between the government and the House, which I think shows how technology can be used to connect politicians with its citizens. A basic premise is simple. A UK citizen or resident can start an e-petition on the site. Staff can screen the proposed petition to ensure it asks for something of government or parliament. It can deliver and it meets the petition standards which stop the system being used, for example, attack on named individuals or to interfere with court proceedings. The petitioner has to find five people to support the e-petition. If they can do that, the petition is put on the website and open for signatures. If 10,000 people sign the petition, the government will respond. If over 100,000 people sign the petition, we will then consider finding time schedule for a debate on the petition. Occasionally, Petitions Committee will look at a particular issue and make policy recommendations. The committee has reported on matters to do with COVID pandemic and also online safety, online abuse, disabled people, high heels and workplace dresses, funding for research into brain tumours. In this parliament, 869 petitions of the lifetime of counting have been answered by the government. There has been over 100 debates, 170 petitions. In 2019, the Hansard Society found over 28% of the population began or signed an e-petition. This is over a quarter of the population. So new technology has been a fantastic way of allowing people to put their concerns onto the political agenda and to make their voice heard. But there are dangers here. As politicians, we know that it's impossible for everyone that they want. What if petitioners come to believe that their petitions lead nowhere or make change? And that is where we are working to make sure that the public understands the process, feels properly connected, even if petitioners do not get all of what they want. In addition to its formal inquiries, the Petitions Committee often does extra work to hear from people about their experiences to inform on debates or petitions. It does this in a range of ways, including organised meeting between petitioners creator and the member who will then open the debate on the petition, surveying people who have signed petitions to hear about their views on the issue, hearing dialect directly from people with experience on the issue through online, face-to-face -face roundtables, 
visiting people directly unaffected by the issue, consulting people's online, for example, or on social media, or online forums to survey their opinions. And what about people who are not online, or do not find normal formats accessible? Sometimes technology itself can help bridge accessibility gaps. The committee has used this to ease publishing of reports online, to make different formats available, easy to read and format, for example. And while the petition system attracts the most engagement, there is still scope for an old-fashioned paper petitions presented by veterans and responds to all petitions represented in the House. There are both a local campaigning tool, a way of making sure government responds. To say, technology has enabled us vastly to extend our engagement with the British public. But what has been important is the way that this is a two-way communication. A two-way communication needs some effect and resources. Parliamentarians need to hear difficult voices. The poor should not be excluded. The people who struggle with the system. And that means everyone needs to be included in conversation. Digital alone is not enough. But the introduction of e-petitions has been a resounding success in opening up conversation in a way which was impossible before the online world came available. But of course, that's about digital. But as I look, and we look at the themes of this conference, and we talk about having a world and one family, well, I've got to say, I would like to start that we stand united, but the family may well be divided. And it will be divided because of the aggression of Russia. It is about international partners condemning Russia. It's a legal assault on Ukraine as an unprovoked attack against a sovereign democratic state. There were poor countries of the world that suffered the most because of this war. The grain embargo is suffering the poorest people of Africa, other poor nations across the world who cannot access that gain. And it is terrible what is happening. The Russian government's responsible. It's totally responsible. Its actions are a violation of international law, including the UN Charter. And we mustn't forget what happened in Israel has been happening in Ukraine. The rape, the murder, the butchering of innocent people of Ukraine. Russia must halt its actions and withdraw from Ukraine. Because in the end, the world will be split in two. We cannot afford a split in the world. We do want one family that comes together. We do not want good versus evil. We believe that free and democracy is the way forward and democratic rights of people should always come first. So please, let us unite. Let us come together. And I will always say that we mustn't split this world in two. And people must be responsible for their actions. And I do hope that Russia is listening. So what I would say is that we will always stand with Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honourable His Excellency, Sir Lindsay Harvey, who